Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here today. Uh, my name is Nicole Huseman uh, of Intel Corporation, and we're here today to talk about the uh, diversity internship program that the OpenStack Foundation uh, introduced in Barcelona, the OpenStack Summit in Barcelona. Um, so with that, uh, I'd like to um, start with introductions, and then we'll quickly dive into what uh, Sonia and uh, Megan have been uh, working on. So um, Sonia Ramza, uh, Megan Guiney, Lauren Sell, uh, and Tom Fifield. If you could uh, give introductions, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. So as you know, I'm Sonia. Um, I'm based in Melbourne in Australia. And as part of my internship, I've been in the community management division with Tom as my mentor. And I've been looking at things like the ambassador program, helping manage that, look at the user groups, which are trying to improve the process involved with new ones coming on or whether it's some that have died off and then need revamping, that sort of stuff. And also driving the Australian IT community towards the OpenStack Summit in Sydney. Excellent. Thanks, Sonia. Hi, I'm Megan. Uh, I have been working with Chris Hodge, who's unfortunately unable to be present today. And I've been working with um, interoperability and QA, which is to say um, interop work group, uh, Tempest, and RefStack. I've also done a little bit of work on trying to build out uh, some back end for uh, the li licensing, li excuse me, licensing and trademark uh, program. So yeah, it's been a good time. I'm Lauren Sell. Oh, oh no. You can do it. I'm Lauren Sell, and I work at the OpenStack Foundation. And I am filling in for Chris Hodge today. Unfortunately, he had to fly out. But um, I have the pleasure to work with both Sonia and Megan, and just, you know, more broadly across our community, looking at, um, you know, new folks coming in and, and learning to work upstream so it can bring a bit of that perspective as well. And I'm Tom Fifield. I'm a community manager at the OpenStack Foundation, uh, looking predominantly after users. And I've been very fortunate to be working with uh, Sonia over the last couple months. Thank you, guys. So as we all know, um, really, contributions are the lifeblood of a project. Uh, and the internship program that was introduced in Barcelona was really focused on growing our next generation of OpenStack contributors, critical to the success of the project. What we'd like to do now is to talk a little bit more to Sonia and Megan um, about, let's start with, what are some of uh, your proudest accomplishments uh, in, the, in the last six months in working with the foundation? Uh, one of the biggest things for me was actually doing a talk yesterday and then uh, that was about getting involved with the community without any code. And then another talk about the ambassador program, that was a huge milestone for me because I was able to take everything I've learned in the short time I've been here since January and package it up and give a talk so other people can also get involved with the community. So giving back and, and taking what I've learned and just giving that out, which was great. Excellent. Thank you, Sylvia. And Megan. Um, so a lot of my... Uh, like things that I'm most proud of that I've worked on here are things that are um, just getting ready to go into production. Um, one of them is, uh, as I said, I, I've worked a little bit um, helping to improve upon the system that we have for storing uh, licensing data. And uh, I'd have to say that my favorite thing that I've worked on so far has been uh, building out a database for that and getting to like write a script that syncs a spreadsheet and the database and like keeps them both up to date. And it's been really cool because it's given me the opportunity to um, build upon something that's a functional system, but um, not necessarily ideal and like move that on its way towards like a way more ideal solution, both for um, people who are um, like on the more technical side and hopefully eventually we'll have good endpoints for people who are less comfortable on that side as well. I have to jump in here and say, when we interviewed Megan to come to the foundation, she was like, I love database work. And we I were do. like, we have some projects for you. That'll be <laughs> awesome. It's, 
I do. It's I'm a big dork. I love I love data. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a real passion for you. Yeah, it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's fantastic. Were there any? Um, uh, oftentimes, you know, we have surprises or challenges along the way. Um, were there any challenges that um, you guys encountered in uh, your work and working with the foundation and getting up to speed on OpenStack and all of the complexities? Uh, you know, definitely that last part you mentioned, getting understanding the um, complexities and also how the whole community is structured. That was something, it was a massive learning curve to get my head around all the terminology, like project technical lead, uh, the user committee, the technical committee, all those sorts of things. It was um, difficult to sort of, at first, not difficult, but just a challenge to take all that information in. But once you get there, you know it like that. And it's been, it was a good challenge to learn. Yeah. Um, for me, one of the biggest challenges was something kind of interesting, and it's because uh, I come from a more ops background rather than development. And so um, where I'm at, even though I'm one of the big like pushers of um, automation and like moving forward in that direction, um, I've never really gone through an intensive code, code auditing process before because if it runs like bug-free in the environment where I come from, it's good enough. So one thing that's been really interesting is learning to discipline myself a lot more, and I've been really appreciative of the people, especially on the RefStack side, who have been very, very um, patient with me, and they've been very good about giving their time to kind of give me really solid, constructive feedback. And so that's been like a, a real um, gift to have a team that's like so patient with my um, noobness, basically. <laughs> As you've been working this last uh, six months, were there any, um, is there any knowledge you want to share or any tools uh, that you found particularly helpful or, or folks along the way too? Uh, definitely Tom as a mentor. He was really great in helping me get through just starting out and, and giving me the orientation I needed to start contributing and making a mark in the community. Um, oh, sorry, I thought you were going to say something. Um, and also, uh, being so far away in Australia, just having a time zone converter was actually really helpful. Um, working out when we could have appropriate meetings, that was actually, as silly as it sounds, it was a really big help. If it's okay, I'll just jump in and uh, say that uh, in the OpenStack community particularly, and I'm sure this is com true in many communities as well, there's just so much going on and uh, potentially many, many different things coming into your inbox. And one of the tools that I noticed Sonia worked with was Trello, just to do a bit of task management and flow between different states uh, of the user group uh, approval process. Fantastic. And Tom, along the way, as, as you were mentoring uh, Sonia, uh, were, there th were there surprises or um, uh, experiences along the way that you'd like to share? In, in that, that could help other mentors uh, to, to bring up people within the community. Absolutely. So as Sonia mentioned, uh, we're remote from each other. I live in Taiwan and Sonia lives in, in Melbourne, Australia, which is uh, about 9, 10, 12 hours flying uh, time away, but uh, relatively time zone consistent. And uh, being that remote, all of the uh, aspects of managing remote workers apply and collaborating with remote colleagues apply. Uh, but I find that in many organizations with remote staff, they often assume that the remote staff are very uh, independent and uh, by themselves uh, able to just uh, perform automatically. And I, I find that uh, with uh, people who are still growing their experience, uh, you need to make sure that you actually have touch points. And I know that I went on a trip for a couple of weeks and Sonia actually had to remind me, hey, you know, we haven't had a meeting for a while. So make sure you're very proactive about communicating with each other and, and constantly uh, sharing that. Yeah, yeah. And Lauren, from your perspective, um, I'm sure you've had many mentoring experiences as well in bringing new folks into the community. Um, what, uh, what is your perspective on what's been most successful for you? So, sorry, <laughs> you know, we've had a couple different, uh, whether it's, you know, 
a new community member or an intern with the foundation. Um, I'm, I'm usually a, a throw them in the deep end kind of person. <laughs> so, uh, but, but at the same time, I think that there is a value to introducing them to different people in the community as soon as possible and getting them connected and not um, positioning yourself as a, as a go-between for that all the time to help them, help them make those relationships, find the resources that they need um, in, in a way that's very seamless. I mean, I know that I've had folks that have no idea that Sonia and Megan are part-time interns who are still at university and they think that they are you know full-time employees and uh, very involved in, I mean they are very involved in the community obviously but th they just that you they wouldn't have known that because that's not the way that they're necessarily positioned they're already so active they already have all of those relationships and I think that's that's really important to grow quickly and, and um, get going yeah one of the things that I quickly noticed uh, this week uh, in, in getting to know Sonia and then Megan as well, is um, how quickly they've come up to speed and um, how uh, integrated into the community um, you both are. So mm -hmm. uh, that's been uh, very impressive um, for both of you and, and also for the, the mentors that you have at the foundation mm -hmm. as well. Did you have any um, hiccups or challenges uh, along the way that you needed to overcome? Um. Oh dear. Um, so again, a lot of my struggles in this were a um, learning how to like discipline my code and like make it so that it's um, really clean and consistent and solid rather than being like something I hacked together in 10 minutes but hey it runs. Uh, the other thing that I kind of struggled with in the very beginning was reaching out because um, a lot of the people in this community are so incredibly technically strong and competent and like super impressive and like that was a little bit scary for me but like these people who are like impressively impressively more experienced than I have than I am um, have like really been incredibly open to reaching out and teaching me things and I've just been so impressed by the community and how it's really um, reached out and helped me adjust. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Sonia, how about you? Were there any um, hiccups or challenges along the way that you had to kind of work through as you were, uh, you know, kind of immersing yourself in the ambassador program or uh, just definitely as a, the time zone is a big challenge um, being Australia is now ahead so they're like already on Friday it's the middle of the night mm -hmm. so <laughs> remembering to sort of send the emails at the right time so they don't get to people at you know 4 a.m. in the morning <laughs> that sort of thing <laughs> um, and and just also being able to follow up because everyone in this community is just super busy they're doing amazing things and it's always really important to follow up uh, with people and then you sort of, sometimes you can sort of miss that email or forget that you haven't got a response and then you go back and you go, okay, I've got to just sort of give a friendly reminder or, you know, follow up and say, hey, how's it going? Uh, so just remembering to do that is a big thing. Excellent. Thank you. And if you were uh, to talk to other new folks coming into the community, are there uh, any words of advice or I, if you want to say top three things that you should or shouldn't do, mm -hmm. um, are, are there any words of advice that you would give to other folks like yourself who are coming into the open staff community? Uh, in terms of actually just joining the community, I'd say find your local user group. Um, whoever's in your region and doing stuff with OpenStack, find them, network, and if you really want to get to know people, the best way is to put your hand up and ask um, if they need any help because there's always things that need to be done and they will love to have you on board and that's also how you meet more people. Um, and then you also get to network as well with other individuals in the industry who are also doing other things you know, with OpenStack and working at particular places. So it can be a very uh, good opportunity to also meet different people from different places. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's interesting because uh, the environment I come from has turned out a couple people and some of the best I, advice I got is some that I would pass on to other interns. And it's funny because I didn't even get it from somebody who's gotten involved in OpenStack, but somebody who's gotten involved in OpenStack's partner because they'd seen it secondhand. And though um, 
my friend uh, was a little less aware of um, like her transition into the community. Like uh, her partner was definitely aware. And um, Lauren, you mentioned like you like to throw people into the deep end. And like though there's lots and lots of support. Um, there's so much, and so in the very beginning, it can feel like an absolute flood of information. And um, my friend's partner, she told me to um, that it's going to be hard in the beginning, but you have to hang tough and put it in. And what you get put in is really what you get out. So, um, like that would be the advice that I would um, give to uh, really stick with it. And it's going to be hard, and it's going to be scary, but you can totally do it because, like. You got this. <laughs> Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. yep. Extremely encouraging. Um, I'm going to throw this to, to Lauren and to Tom now in terms of, um, from a mentor perspective, what are some of the top uh, words of advice you would give to other folks like yourselves? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so I guess this is uh, something that's uh, adjacent to what Sonia was talking about before and, and the people. Often, as the mentor or the, the more senior person in the community, you have a lot of those connections. And really take the time to scroll through your, your Rolodex and find people that you should introduce uh, your mentee to. Uh, I'd, I'd highly recommend that as a, a beginning. I don't know if you want to alternate, perhaps? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and the other, the other aspect I'd probably mention is uh, not to underestimate anyone. So in the uh, early first couple of weeks of working with Sonia, she'd already very quickly burned through all of the tasks that we thought uh, she was going to do. And so we had to rapidly kind of work out what, what was going to be next. So it's important uh, that you're not just going to come up with a, a front-loaded set of tasks that will be done across an entire time. You have to be constantly thinking about what's next, how is the advancement working, and uh, it's, it's really interesting to see that take different directions and different forms uh, as uh, uh, the, the process progresses. I was actually going to say something similar to the second one. <laughs> no, it's good. Um, I, I was going to say, you know, not to think too small in terms of the, the tasks that you're outlining, even if you're coming up with a, a project that might push, um, you know, your mentee or someone that you're bringing into the community, um, I think it's it's worth getting them that exposure and helping them through that process. Um, and kind of along those lines, I would say just you know, it's for me hiring anyone on your team or, or new people that are coming into the community. You know, you have this kind of idea of the role and the job description and you th these outline of tasks they're going to do. But I really like to pay attention to you know how they're performing, what they're picking up on, what they really enjoy, what they start to spend their time on, and then kind of mold their path from there and not have it be quite so structured to what you thought it was going to be in the beginning. Just see you know, what people really gravitate toward and, and how they're making the biggest impact in the community and then help them, them go that direction. Um, and the other thing, just kind of a little more tactically, but um, you know, obviously we're a distributed community and having to, to talk online. We, the foundation itself is a distributed team. Um, so, you know, it, it, that communication can certainly be difficult, especially as we're heading into things like the summit. I know for everyone here, yeah, it's a very busy time, whether you're launching a product there, or working on, um, you know, preparing for sessions. But the foundation team, it's like, you know, the month before the summit is just a crazy time. <laughs> and so it's easy to kind of lose sight of communicating or, you know, making sure that you get on video. We use Zoom meetings quite a bit, or we use Slack calls or Skype calls, um, but, but getting on video and having those conversations, making time for that is extremely important. Even though you think, oh, I don't have 30 minutes for this, it can actually save time <laughs> and, and help you know everyone be more effective heading into the summit. So that's something that I fall down on sometimes, <laughs> but it's, I think it's very important and, and try to remind ourselves that. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the questions that I like to ask towards the end is, are there any questions that I haven't asked that um, information you'd like to share? Uh, Things that come to mind. Um, not off the top of my head immediately. Um, 
like my a lot of my takeaways that haven't been technical from this are just like the absolute strength of community, especially when the community is so like um, like competent and strong and like vibrant. It's just awesome. But um, other than that, other than reiterating that, I can't think of anything else that I would want to say. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Megan. So uh, just if anyone ever wants to pursue being an intern at the OpenStack Foundation, um, it's probably one of the best decisions you'll ever make. Um, and even just advice being, don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, you know, that, that's the best way to learn and pick up on things. And it's, it's such a supportive and friendly environment. They'll be happy to answer your questions or help you through the process. As Lauren said, you know, throwing you in, but they will guide you. They won't just sort of leave you to go at it alone. So um, things like that. And then also making those connections and meeting new people as much as it can be like a bit daunting. It's, it is one of the best things you can do as part of it as well. We, Excellent. They definitely toss you in, but they don't toss you in without a pool floating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say um, a big thank you to Nicole. I don't know if y'all have noticed that she's wearing this medal around her neck because she just won a community award for being the mentor of mentors. And I just really appreciate all of her efforts to help organize this and not somewhat of a shameless plug, but she... Um, you know, helped get funding from Intel to support the interns that we brought into the community and help get more folks involved and grow there. And I just really appreciate that. And if there's anyone out there, it, it, it doesn't have to just be an OpenStack Foundation thing. If there's anyone out there who is, you know, has internship positions at their organization or just generally wants to be a mentor in the community, we would love to get you connected into a few different programs that we have, um, like this one that that Nicole and, and Intel have helped support. So just really, really appreciate that and all of your efforts to make this possible. And our interns are incredible. And Thank we you. Love Thank them. you. Wow, well, that's a, a tough uh, paragraph to follow. Um, <laughs> I'll fall back on, on something I've been wanting to do for the, the last 20 minutes, which is uh, wish a very happy birthday to, to Gene Kuo, who's in the uh, fourth row there. He was one of our prior interns, uh, nice. based in Taiwan, and worked a lot on askopenstack.org. So. Thank you very much, Jean. Uh, you're very much uh, still still a part of things. And uh, mm -hmm. thanks to uh, everyone else on, on the panel as well. Fantastic, Tom. Thank you so much. You know, it's really been a pleasure. Uh, one of the things that I've truly appreciated about the OpenStack community is what a large mentoring community that we have. Uh, I'm involved in uh, the speed mentoring activities that have become really sort of a mainstay of each of the different summits. Um, we have Iriko who uh, leads upstream mentoring. Uh, we have a long-term uh, mentoring program. Um, you know, and I have certainly uh, enjoyed getting involved and helping with these activities because it is my passion and um, because I'm very, uh, dedicated to ensuring the diversity and inclusion within open source communities. Um, and I've really, really enjoyed getting to know uh, Sonia and Megan. It's been fantastic folks. So thank you all for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. So I have a question. Uh, I guess this is a question for Sonia and Megan. Was, was there a, like, opportunity to bond between like all of the interns because I mean what I'm, I'm from OPNFE and I've noticed that interns develop a great relationship with mentors and their project teams which is great but I don't think I've personally done a good job of making sure that interns have the opportunity to know each other and bond so it's just going to see what your experience has been. I will say that um, I'm based out of Portland and she's based out of Australia. <laughs> So there have been some issues with that um, in terms of like that particular aspect. Uh, time zones are hard, yo. Um, so, but I did get the opportunity to meet Sonia at the summit and she's awesome. And I've been totally g glad to meet her along with everybody else here. It's been super cool to put like names to faces. And generally like it's been fun getting to know her even though I, I'm typically on the other side of the world. So that is a difficulty in this particular case. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Oh, yeah, just likewise for me, his <laughs> awesomeness. Um, but also, like Tom and another person.
person I work with, David Flanders, they encouraged me to connect with other mentors. So, you know, I sent, mm -hmm. you know, Megan a message before the summer and said, hey, you know, I'm one of the other uh, interns, yeah. uh, you know, let's, can we chat, you know, and that sort of thing. So, I have been encouraged remotely to speak, unfortunately, yeah, this mm -hmm. is the first time we've met, but it's been fantastic to get to know her in person as well. Excellent. Thank you for the question. Um, let's ask for, are there any other questions that the audience may have? Now, this question is for anyone on the panel, really, but um, you know, do you see any areas uh, for improvement for the community to lower the barrier of entry for new contributors? Um, wow, I think I'll give that to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm curious if Megan has any, any feedback, especially becoming a, an upstream contributor recently. So um, when I had actually, prior to getting this internship, looked into getting involved because it's always been something I'm interested in. As I said, um, my organization has like a history of like having some of our like really cool alumni having done open staff work. And um, so a lot of the barrier to entry for that and why I didn't start sooner was because I didn't know where to start. And realistically, um, that's just a thing of like getting involved in local community. So I think the only real thing that they could be doing better, which I mean, they're awesome. And like, there's just not enough people on the ground ever to do this sort of thing is like um, meetups. And we do have a Portland meetup, but um, I just never managed to make it to that. And that's my own fault. <laughs> realistically, I was just a bit shy. Yeah, so really, no areas for improvement. <laughs> I think there's a lot of room for improvement <laughs> in, in getting new people involved. I mean, in, in, you know, especially in different areas and, and certainly contributing upstream. Um, I know last year we changed the individual contributor license agreement to DCO, um, but there's still some just kind of infrastructure and process changes we need to make along the way of like not necessarily needing a launch pad ID or some other pieces, um, and, and I do think that that kind of upstream, um, making it much easier for people to contribute upstream is important as the project's maturing, as we want you know, more users to be able to contribute that may not have like a full-time person that can become you know, extremely involved in a project, but may you know, have a couple of, mm -hmm. of things they want to submit every once in a while. So I know that's, that's been a big conversation. And then, um, you know, certainly as we've been growing globally, obviously there's been a ton of investment and interest from China. We've talked about the time zone issues, but you know, how do we really um, help more people be able to get involved and contribute? And a lot of this has to do with just better documentation, different communications channels and, and hand-holding through that. So I've, I've heard of several conversations about it this week. I know I was talking with um, Mike Perez about, he, he was gonna put together like, a punch list of what are the, where can we really use resources in the community? What, what are kind of the gaps to fill in? Because we've had a lot of people come this week and they're like, I'm excited, where do I get involved? And we'd love to be able to point them to a place and say, look, these are, this is the low hanging fruit. This is exactly where we would love for you to get involved. And then here's kind of the getting started part. Um, and I know there also was an effort to do some different like um, lightning talk recordings this week that were, that we can publish online afterwards of kind of how to, how to, I think it was along the lines of like, what, what are reviewers looking for? How to kind of get your code into OpenStack, which hopefully will be helpful as well. So those, those are some of the kind of the upstream side things that I'm hearing about, but I, I do think there's a lot of opportunity for growth there. <laughs> you do a lightning talk uh, around women of OpenStack as well. Oh, uh, excellent. Nice. Yeah. Indeed. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, it's probably worth pointing out some of the changes we've made to this event that we're here at, at the OpenStack Summit. So. The onboarding rooms, uh, for example, you can go in there and join your, your favorite upstream development project and learn how the sausage is made, as was famously quoted. Uh, and in addition, we've uh, started, well, we, we've uh, worked to remove the artificial barrier between those who are developing upstream and those who are using the software by uh, reimagining the design summit as the forum. And uh, we've seen this week uh, many, many more collaborations uh, across that divide happening in those sessions, so I'm excited to see what we can do in Sydney in six months' time. Yeah, absolutely. Good question. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, 
the, the onboarding rooms were like super cool and like I was seeing those and thinking that they sound amazing and like I totally wish I'd had access to that. <laughs> so hi, my question is for Sonia and Nathan. So you guys are interns and I, it's refreshing in a tech conference and you see four of the uh, women up on stage. So my question for you is like what motivated you to apply for the internship at a fully tech organization, foundation like that, and what kind of tips you would say for the audience on how to motivate like young girls in their community to step up and want to be in the tech field? Thank you. Um, I was really passionate about technology. Um, I love the fact of how it can help people because um, I've been touched by people with disability in my life. I've got a sister with disability, and technology has been a, a massive thing in helping her to live an even better life and face life challenges. So that's why I'm uh, really passionate about where technology can go and where it can take people, and that's why I want to get involved in tech. It's always something I've been interested in as well, uh, just how to and, and tinkering and that sort of thing. Um, and also the community part, uh, getting people involved. I've, really love the idea of connecting people and helping them achieve new goals by getting involved as well. That, that's also been a really big passion of mine. So it sort of came together in this internship because it was like community management and then it, with the tech company. So it, it's really been like a really nice sort of overlap in, in two big passions of mine. Um, advice, getting involved in tech. Uh, in, I guess encouraging them to look at organisations like in Australia we have, uh, I think it's called Code Like a Girl or, or, and um, Robo Girls, so great organisations that come to schools that, and show things like little robots that they can program, um, like getting them interested and sparking their interest in doing fun stuff uh, with tech and code, then they, that could put them onto that path of taking STEM and seeing where it could take them. That, that might be a potential way to get um, more women involved. Um, for me, this is a more complicated question because outside of being female, I'm a pretty traditional, like, nerd type. I always grew up being very interested in math and the sciences and tech in general. Um, that said, I would say that um, the best advice, I think, that would lead to, like, getting more women into tech is, um, like, breaking that stereotype that you have to be, like, the traditional tech nerd person like me. It's, um, there's room for everybody here. Like tech is for everybody and it's really about finding that niche within the industry that I think um, that you're really passionate about. Like I'm really into data, I'm really into coding and I'm really into databases and that's just who I am and not everyone has to be that person and if we were all that person, the tech industry would be kind of flat and boring and it just wouldn't function at all. Um, so I'd say that really it's find that thing that like lights your imagination on fire and just go after it. Um, I will say though that statistically women are more likely to take no for an answer and not persist. Um, like after statistical analysis um, in cases where um, women were told no and like, like kind of turned down for opportunities, uh, they were more likely to um, stop. And so we have to figure out a way to um, break past that and make them realize that um, just keep pushing. Believe in yourself and pursue your passions and kick down those doors and you can do it. You know, it's, it's about really persisting, I think. Thank you all um, for being here on uh, late on the Thursday afternoon. Um, we really appreciate it.